Vanessa Sturgeon literally has a bird's eye view of downtown Portland. From her offices on the seventh floor of the studio building overlooking Director Park, the president and CEO of TMT Development has seen the changes in downtown Portland and will be a big part of the city's future. Vanessa Sturgeon develops and manages high-rise office, retail, and apartment buildings in Portland. She's also a philanthropist sitting on a number of professional and volunteer boards and is chair emeritus of downtown Portland Clean and Safe. Vanessa Sturgeon, welcome to Ion Northwest Politics. Thanks for having me. Well, according to Colliers, the office vacancy rate in Portland Central City is among the highest in the nation, 34% and rising. Some people think it could get as high as 40% before it's all over. So what happened to downtown Portland and can it come back when it comes to office vacancies? Well, similar things happened across the country after COVID shutdowns. So the states that had the most restrictive COVID shutdowns ended up with more difficulties in getting office workers back to the office. So that coupled with some tax measures, preschool for all and supportive housing services, it really incented people to move outside of Multnomah County into the suburbs. And that's what's happened. We've seen the suburbs have very strong occupancy rates while downtown office rates have really suffered. A lot of those downtown workers who went remote during COVID will not be coming back. That's pretty much a fact. What can we do with all this available office space? Can it be repurposed? Can, can we think of different ways to envision using that space? Where do you see that going? We can, and we're at the first phase of that where there's a resetting of value of downtown office buildings. So the values have dropped um, enough at this point potentially for a new buyer to come in and convert that into a different kind of space. And um, we need some additional tax incentives um, or other types of incentives from the city to make it really feasible because it is very expensive to convert office into anything else. But we're gonna have to be creative and figure out a way to do it because as you said, a lot of these buildings are gonna stay empty uh, for the foreseeable future um, and really need that creative kind of thinking. But Portland tends to be very precious about these ideas and we are um, wanting to head toward perfect and we let that get in the way of you know, regular solutions. And um, in fact, when Hillary Clinton was here uh, last week, I was in a small meeting with her before her presentation and she specifically mentioned how Portland has gotten in its own way in terms of too much regulation um, with regard to conversions. You talked about the expense regulation. What are some of the other barriers to converting office space into something else? Uh, are, there, are there physical limitations to the way these buildings are constructed that would prevent some uses? They are, there are definitely physical constraints, specifically really deep bay depths. So apartments have to have windows. And so oftentimes that gets in the way, um, as do the seismic upgrade requirements. So what do you think that we can do to push this forward? Uh, is it a matter of changing some regulations, uh, permitting? What, what can we do? Regulations and permitting for certain as well as fees um, for conversions. And so we need to be creative and thoughtful about that because my biggest concern is at this point, tax revenue is really on the decline for property taxes in downtown Portland. And that affects the entire state because that revenue um, makes up a lot of the state's property tax revenue. And so with buildings appealing their taxes and the values going down and tax revenue going down at such an extreme pace, we really need to find a way to backfill that tax revenue. So I'm hopeful that the city will consider the fact that in the long term, this will be helpful for them in terms of revenue for the basic services that we all need. What did you think when you heard that U.S. Bank was moving out of the U.S. Bank Court Tower? That was really disappointing and a major blow. Um, but at the same time, not altogether too surprising given the issues with safety and security on the Burnside Corridor. So um, in the term, it seems like the focus on safety would really help retain some of these local tenants.
Have you seen any improvements, say, over the past year in downtown Portland? the way things look on the street. Yeah, there has been a substantial amount of improvement. You can see that um, police morale is starting to come back and support for uh, law and order is starting to come back within your general population. You've seen people really get engaged in the political process and that's been a silver lining for you know all the difficulties that Portland has faced in that people are now paying attention to their local elections. and. Um, the county has focus that has never had focus on it before. So previously, you notice that a lot of people blame things on the city that really are not within the city's purview. The county is in charge of the sheriff's office, the district attorney's office, jails and jail space, uh, behavioral health, um, substance use disorder treatment, and homelessness. That all resides within the county. And now people know that and they are focusing on these county elections in a way that they never had before. We've only got about 30 seconds left, but I just want to get your general feeling about optimism. Are you optimistic about where Portland can go, especially considering where we've been? Yeah, we're seeing a lot of work on the task sites coming up. So those task sites are really important for housing people quickly in a humane way. Um, And there's a lot more focus on treatment, which is ultimately what constituents want very clearly. They want people to be treated, to be able to get better and stay in permanent housing. Do you think that the uh, new form of government, city government, will be good for Portland? I don't know, it remains to be seen. Thank you very much, Uh, Vanessa Sturgeon. Appreciate you being here on Ion Northwest Politics. Thanks for having me.